Imagine a world power's economic future and possibly its failure laid out in a few scribbled notes. I, I may have just described the entirety of Britain's Brexit strategy. Well, the UK government tonight says that a photograph of a document in the hands of a Conservative Party official says nothing about the government's Brexit plans. But once you focus and read what is written, you have to wonder. Consider this. In the document, you'll find, what's the model? Have cake and eat it. Now, that was the stance of Boris Johnson on exiting the European Union right after he became foreign minister. You won't hear him saying that today, of course. And we think it's unlikely we'll be offered the single market. Now, that refers to the sobering realization that you can't access the EU's market without subscribing to free movement of labor. And then there's this little scribbled note. The French are likely to be most difficult. Also, the realization that a free trade deal with the European Union will not be easy to negotiate, thanks, of course, to those difficult French. So, scribbled nonsense or the blueprint to a nation's referendum rendezvous with destiny. I've pulled in the man who maybe can give us some insights, David Charter. He is with the Times, he's the correspondent with the Times, and he wrote, well, the Bible on Brexit, in and out. What do you make of, of these notes? Do they tell us what we think we already knew? They do. Uh, they've, there's a reason why the British media is all over this, why the European media is all over this. It's because Theresa May, the Prime Minister, has been fantastically secretive about what the British plan is and the development uh, of her ideas for Brexit. Mm -hmm. Remember, she wanted to stay, actually, but she's Prime Minister, so she's got a deal with Flip leaving flops. the European Union. Yeah. So she did not want anything to come out about her stance. She's going to court to fight to the Supreme Court, to fight against even having a debate in Parliament. So when you see, for the first time, what appears to be a, a, a very authoritative yeah. briefing that was given to a senior MP, it was held by his uh, senior assistant, but it was given to the MP for Westminster, who covers the city. And the city, more than almost any other single um, authority in Britain wants yeah. to know what is going on and where are we going and wants an input into the process. I think that this gives us the clearest insights into British thinking that we've, that we've had so well, far, despite the government denials. Uh, well, I mean, th there was basically no thinking. No one reckoned with Brexit. Well... Except um, the Brexiteers. Yes, but it's been, what, four or five months since the uh, referendum results in June. So that a lot of thinking and a lot of discussing has been going on. And we learn a lot from these minutes. That Just this one scribbled note, it says, no Norway. Right, no Norway model. No Norway. That right. means we don't want to be cl really close to the European Union. We don't want to be so close that we have to have the free movement of people. Right. It says, no transitional deal. That means we want to to get it all wrapped up in two years. We don't want this process to, to drag on. It's like a fast, like a Las Vegas divorce in a way, isn't it? It's, it could get like that. Mm -hmm. um, Britain would rather have it like that because they're worried that with 27 different uh, countries on the other side of the <laughs> table, everyone's going to try and, and take a piece of the action. Mm -hmm. And Britain wants to close that down. This, this notion of having your cake and eating it too, uh, I mean, you know, not to mention just the, the hubris there, um, but it, it, it's, it seems... It was for internal consumption. Uh, but really, but still, it? though, to, yeah. just, to say, you know, to put that, to write that, uh, uh, amazing. I, I want you to take a listen to what the Prime Minister of Malta said today about any kind of Brexit deal. There cannot be a decoupling of the four freedoms, the basic principles of the European Union. We, for one, want a fair deal for the United Kingdom, but it cannot be a superior deal to what membership is. It has to be inferior to what membership is. I mean, leave it to Malta to give us a reality check. I mean, you know, a used car salesman cannot demand the same price for his used car that he would for a new car. And, and it seems to be that the UK government so far has at least hinted that they want, you know, to come out smelling like a rose. Well, the other thing that was in the memo was just this line saying Canada Plus. So this is the right. goal for uh, Britain to get a free trade deal 
that's better than the best free trade deal that's so far been negotiated between the EU and another country, which is with Canada. It's just been agreed. It took six or seven years. And it almost collapsed. It almost collapsed right. because it had to be ratified through all the parliaments. But if they can get it done in the two years, they can get it done on a qualified majority. It doesn't have to be abs absolutely everybody agreeing. It could be done on a qualified majority. You, I think this a... seems to be the plan that's shaping up. Try and get it done quickly and then you get it done more easily. How, rea how realistic is it's that? Not, it's not very realistic. No, it's not, is it? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say, because it's my country and I'm looking, I'm looking on at these uh, like any other you know, interested party, I want to be able to live and work uh, in Europe, as, as many Britons right. do. I would like to see that there is a commitment to um, as close to free movement as we can get, but... The problem is, is that Theresa May has a very difficult circle to square. Yeah. She needs to satisfy some very hard-line mm -hmm. members of her own party who want nothing to do with the European Union. Which brings me back to something I asked you when we started talking about this. Will Brexit really ever take place? I still think... You, are you still standing by your position that it will? I know there's, there's still a lot of um, talk about it could all collapse. And we've talked about how this could happen because it could go on for so long that we run into the next British general election in 2020 That's right. where a new government comes in that actually wants to put the final deal to another referendum. Which and they could. Which they could. This govern, government, the Conservatives, could perhaps put the final deal to a referendum. There's, a, there's an argument going on about that. I would still say it's odds on that Brexit is happening and will happen because I'm afraid the poisoning of relations between Britain and the rest of the European Union, it deepened by this memo, targeting the French uh, is only going to make re sour relations more. On the and, and we have to you know, remind our viewers too that, that that referendum, the Brexit referendum, is not binding in the UK, technically, right? Right. Yeah. So, it, so Brexit doesn't have to happen. It's an advisory vote. Well, you tell that to the 17 million people who voted to leave the European Union. There is actually a lot of confusion among ordinary voters yeah. about the process, but you're talking about a technical matter, right. which is that technically this was an advisory referendum. Yeah. That's not the way it seems to the voters who voted for it. So I do think it's happening, but we're going to have this discussion, oh, I yeah. can tell, for a few more There's a lot of years. mileage left in this one. David Charter, as always, we appreciate your insights. Thank you.